What's up guys, Tyler Casey here, and today I'm gonna to teach you this advanced editing trick right in Adobe Premiere that can help level up your editing. This is kind of an advanced editing technique, but it is definitely useful to take your edits to the next level and can really help out if you guys don't know about this yet. Before I get into this video, it'd mean a lot to me if you guys could give this video a like. It would help out a lot with the YouTube algorithm so other people can find this video. So just give it a like. I'm gonna hop right into Premiere and show you guys how to do this. Start off with just a regular clip out here in Premiere Pro. So I have this clip in a sequence. It's in a 4K timeline and we just have a simple little gimbal shot right there. So 4K clip, and if we look, it's 60 frames per second. And then I am in, let's check our sequence. So I'm in a 24 frame per second sequence. So I can make this slow motion. I can just type in speed duration. Let's just bring it down to 50%. So now I play it, everything's moving in slow motion. Let's say I thought the clip was a little bit shaky and I wanna put warp stabilize on. And then we get this error right away. Warp stabilize and speed cannot be used on the same clip. So I'm gonna teach you guys how to fix this. So the best way to fix this is just take off warp stabilize. And then what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're going to want to nest your clip. I'm gonna teach you guys all about nesting today and a bunch of ways you can utilize it in ways that you've never even thought of. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click and we're going to click nest and we're going to click okay. Now, we can apply warp stabilize and click analyze and it's gonna start going. So it works now, but what does the nest sequence really do? So I'm gonna show you guys what you can actually do with this. So I took off warp stabilize. So when I click into it, I can actually click into that specific clip. When I drag it, I can shorten it, but I can't drag it any longer. But if I click into the clip, I can make it longer there. So it's basically just mirroring whatever is inside of it and kind of makes it its own clip. So it doesn't recognize that it has speed duration applied to it because I nested it. So I can apply warp stabilizer to it. So anything that really happens in this sequence will show up in here. It kind of just like compiles everything together and makes it a new clip. It's almost like thinking of like you rendered out your entire video and you have this new clip. It's not rendered though, so don't think it's gonna play any faster. It kind of just compiles everything and almost organizes it for you. So let's say you did some crazy edit that was like stacked on stacked on stacked on top of each other. It's just taking up tons of space on your timeline. You can easily just select all those, nest them, and it's gonna clear everything up, but you can still go in and apply everything. It's almost like a folder. So like, look, if I just take a little bit of this and I turn the middle to invert, and then I play it through, we'll see that halfway through, it inverts right there. So basically just whatever the contents are inside, it basically does that. So I'm gonna show you a bunch of uses where I have used this and we're able to get some pretty cool looks with it. So here's another one. Let's say I have this clip right here, it's slowing down still, and let's say I wanna zoom it in to, I don't know, let's say 170 and I want it off to the left a little bit and I play it through. And then let's say I want to throw a VHS effect on it. So let's try that. So, and let's say I want that four by three look with the VHS. So I come here, but it's not applying it. So I'm playing that through and it's not working anymore. And the reason is because it's cropped in. So it's kind of reading the entire, it's reading the entire footage. So if I reset this, it's gonna look how I want it to but I want it to be cropped on these edges right here. So what you wanna do is you would actually wanna nest it. So we just have it slowed down and we have it cropped in how we'd like. And then we would basically create a nest. And then on that nest, I would drag on VHS and then we apply the four by three and then we get the crop. So just like that. So that's kind of the power of nesting. There's lots of other things you can do. You can do all sorts of motion stuff as well. So let's say I have this shot right here and I want to do some stuff to it. So let's say I want it slowly zooming in and I also want the edges cropped. So let's say I'm zooming in like this and I'm zooming into there and I have him in the center of the frame. But let's say I also want to zoom it out and I want to see the black edges of it and I want to see some clips I'm underneath. Um, I've done this on some edits as well, so I would nest it and then I would, and then you can actually zoom it out and you could do stuff like that. So let's say I wanted it like that and I wanted a clip underneath the same clip 
but I wanted this one in black and white for some reason. So now I have the same clip. It has that same animation. It's still zooming in for whatever I did. But then when you nest it, it basically creates a new clip. So just be careful with nesting, you guys, because when you actually nest, you're actually decreasing the quality if you zoomed in or anything like that. And it basically resets it at 100 uh, when you nest it. So you're not actually getting all your quality back. You're basically just like creating like a new clip. So the more you keep punching in and keep adding effects, you might lose a little bit of quality the more you zoom in. But it's definitely a really cool tool to use and I use it on almost all my edits. So just play around with it and you can create some really new, unique stuff. If you guys found this video useful, make sure to like this video to really help me out. Comment down below. Let me know some ways that you guys plan on using nesting and if you have used it before. I'm Tyler Casey. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks.